Chapter 16 is about aqueous ionic equilibrium. And so we're looking at more reactions, more things that are happening in aqueous solution. As always, there's some suggested problems for you. These can be found at the back of your textbook and the odd numbered problems have the answer at the end of the book. We're gonna start out by talking about buffer solutions. Buffer solutions are really important to biology and chemistry and lots of other disciplines. This is essential for our body to maintain the pH in our cells and in our blood. And so uh, it is a really important topic to understand. So a buffer is made up of a weak acid and its conjugate base. So the anion of that weak acid. And when we have both of those components present, it allows us to add acid and have it neutralized, add base and have it neutralized. And so in our blood, there's a mixture of carbonic acid and hydrogen carbonate that helps to regulate the pH of our blood. So how do buffers work? Because we contain both the acid and its conjugate base, if we add in base, it is going to react with, its, with the acid and form more of the conjugate base, increasing the amount of conjugate base that is in our solution. If we have our buffer solution and we add acid, it's going to react with the conjugate base and form more of the acid. Producing more of our acid in the solution. And so it doesn't matter if we add acid or we add base, because both species are present, it can work to neutralize either one. Let's look at what happens if we add a salt containing the anion of our acid. So in this case, we're adding um, sodium attached to the A minus. So if we think back to Le Chatelier's principle, we've got A minus. If we add additional A minus into our solution, it shifts the equilibrium towards the reactant, shifts it to the left. So what this means is that it causes, when we add that conjugate base, we add that A minus, it shifts it towards the reactants and away from the products, which means that our OH minus in the solution ends up decreasing the amount. And so our pH is going to be a higher pH than what it would be if we didn't have that common ion in the solution. So you can see from our examples or the pictures down below, if we put our pH meter into an acidic solution, so um, acetic acid, 0.1 molar, we get a pH of 2.9. If we put it into sodium acetate, we get a pH of about 8.9. And if we put it into a mixture of the two, it falls not exactly in the middle of the two, but higher than the pH of just the acid. If we want to calculate the pH, we can use something called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And this is derived from the Ka expression. And if you want to see how this equation, how we come about getting this equation, uh, you can look at it in your book. But what it boils down to is that to find the pH 
of any buffer solution, it's equal to the pKa of the acid plus the log of the concentration of the basic form divided by the concentration of the acidic form. And this works, this equation works really well when the concentrations of the acidic and the basic form are large so that we can assume that any changes in amounts are small. So we're using the X is small approximation in order to, to use this calculation or this formula. And so usually this means that the initial concentration of the acid and the conjugate base or the salt, those concentrations should be somewhere between 100 and 1,000 times larger than the value of the Ka. All right, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is really important to remember because we use it so frequently. Whenever we have a buffer solution, we tend to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And so here is an example. So we've got a pH, we're trying to figure out what the pH of a buffer that is 0 0.05 molar of the acid and 0 0.15 molar of the conjugate base. And we can see that this is a conjugate base because it is the same anion as what is in our acid. And again, for henderson hasselbach this has to be weak acid and conjugate base. Or it could e just as easily be a weak base and its conjugate acid, but we use the equation the exact same way. Okay, so let's calculate our pH. So our, we have first have to start by finding our pKa and that is equal to the negative log of our Ka. In this case, the Ka is 6.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. This gives us a pKa of 4.187. Okay, so we're going to use our equation pH equals pKa plus the log of our base, basic form over the acidic form. And so if we plug in what we know about our problem here, it is 4.187 for our pKa plus the log in our basic form was 0 0.150 divided by the acidic form 0 0.050 molar. Okay. If we calculate this out, we find our pH is 4.66. All right, pause the video, try to practice, see if you can calculate the pH of our hydrofluoric acid and potassium fluoride. All right, so in order to calculate our pH, we need to remember our equation. pH is equal to pKa plus the log of A minus over HA. Okay, remember this is just telling us the conjugate base divided by the acidic form. So we're given the pKa in the problem. Our pKa was 3.15 plus the log. Our basic form is Kf because it doesn't have the hydrogen. 
It's our anion attached to another cation. Divided by the acidic form. So we know that HF is our acidic form because it is attached to the hydrogen. And this is equal to 2.86. Okay, so you'll notice here that because there is more acidic form than basic form, our pH is lower than the pKa. In the first example that we did, there was more basic form than acidic form, and our pH was higher than the pKa. So that's something just to keep in mind to check your work. Depends on which one is in a higher concentration.